Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in the Cube. Another week, another roundup, and whew, there were a ton of community items this last week. It was really hard to pick from them, but I did my best. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Chris Webb's got a blog looking at how you can speed up your Power Query processing inside of Power BI Desktop. The trick here is to use table.view. He had a blog post on this a while back, but he claims in this blog post that the example wasn't really fitting for what he wanted here. And so now he's got a blog post really going at it to show you what's going on and the reason for why it can take some time to go and get data from a Power Query perspective. He also called out that this is actually kind of a written version of something he described in a video he did with us. And so I'll link to that video up above. It's a little bit long, but there is a ton of great information inside of it. So definitely check that out and be sure to check out this blog post to see how you can speed up your Power Query from a processing perspective inside of Power BI Desktop if query folding is potentially not occurring. Greg Deckler's got a blog post looking at Excel to DAX, so kind of comparing Excel functions and what the DAX equivalent would be. And this is actually a three-part blog post, and I've linked to the part three of this blog because then you can easily figure out part two and part one. I like this because if you're coming from the Excel world and you're trying to figure out the DAX equivalents for these items and you're not really sure what to do, this blog post can kind of help steer you in the right direction, right? It gives you a starting point for something you're very familiar with and gets you to something that you're probably not familiar with at all. So check it out. Like I said, three part series. I'm only linking to part three down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Alberto Ferrari's looking at conditional formatting, but he did it in a way that I wasn't really thinking about. Like I've, I've obviously done stuff with conditional formatting, but what he's doing is actually picking out the min and max from a given table. And after looking at the blog and, and he's also got a video inside of it as well. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I just never thought about it. So this is a nice little tool to put in your tool belt. And if you are looking to actually highlight specific items within the it, within your table, not necessarily conditional formatting on all of the cells, Check out this blog post and check out the video. Alberto's got you covered. Alex Powers has got a video series out there, which he's calling the 30 day challenge for query folding. This is specific to Power Query, but he's basically taking 30 days and going through different items and challenging you to go and do something and then comment on those items. So it's pretty sweet. Query folding is one of those concepts that's hard for some people to grasp and to understand what's really going on. And what I like here is he's going through different types of scenarios to figure out what it's actually doing and to educate you on how query folding works inside of Power Query. Today's May 18th, so there's 18 videos out there so far and there is more to come, 30 days worth, I would assume. So check it out. I've got a link also up above to the video series itself. It's linked to the playlist so you can see all of those items. We got another case study from the Power BI team. This one is for Viola and they are an environmental company. So dealing with water, waste management, things like that. And what I love about these customer stories or case studies is that they walk you through what their challenge was, where they were coming from and where they ended up landing. In this case, they had a bunch of reporting services reports and they were emailing out Excel files as to all of their customers. And they were able to consolidate all of that with a Power BI report and using row level security for all of their customers, which is awesome. The other thing I love about these case studies is they give you what the architecture is. So you can get an idea for how are these companies actually implementing this? And typically Power BI is that spear or the tip of the spear. And there's a bunch of stuff underneath it from a data perspective because the data is what's important, right? And we got to get that data right before we go into Power BI. And so this architecture was using the Azure modern architecture recommendations and it's working for them, which is amazing. If you get a second, check out this case study. The blog post has a link to the full case study where you can go and read all about what Viola is doing with Power BI and maybe you'll learn something. 
All right, I want to hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments below. I want to hear it. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.